Good afternoon, everybody. I promise you I have a positive message, despite my prop. Embracing digital, but ignore print at your peril. I'm talking about publishing, of course, and particularly magazines, which is my business. Is print dead? This is a phrase, a question that's been asked many times over the last 10, 15 years. The print industry and publishing, newspapers and magazines are in peril, they say. It won't last. Digital will take over. David Carson, legendary graphic designer, said it was the end of print in 1995. It's still here. The Economist, 10 years ago, asked who killed the newspaper. Here are some rather fearful statistics. UK advertising growth forecasts for the next few years. So this is, new, this is the UK. My business is global, so it's slightly different. Global magazine and a luxury magazine. We're looking here at magazines generally in the UK, predicting 2017 to be down, advertising rates to be down between 10 and 20%. Pretty scary. Of course, digital is certainly taking a larger part of the pie. The pie doesn't seem to get any bigger, and more and more advertisers and marketeers are turning to digital. However, and this is quite a big however, it's a very big however, very big stage, very big screen. However, there are, very, there are many trusted sources of late who are contradicting those predictions. Ubiquity said recently that print is two and a half times more effective per impact than online display. Trusted source. Time Inc. UK, that's the parent company of wallpaper, a trusted source, recently did research that said magazine return on investment, that's sales lift to ad spend, ranges from four times up to 17 times. Milward Brown, very trusted source. I believe one of their executives spoke yesterday. Print is more successful than TV or online in driving increases in persuasion metrics. Persuasion metrics, such as brand awareness, brand favorability, and purchase intent. Also showed that print enhanced the campaign's effectiveness when combined with TV or digital. Well said then. Lindsay Patterson, another extremely trusted source. As the emergent short-term micro-messaging world dominates, we all know about micro-messaging, our good friend Donald Trump, the king of micro-messaging, says it's important that, Lindsay says it's important that we keep an eye firmly focused on the creation of longer-term work that has the power to drive leaps in business value by delivering potent brand meaning. And The Guardian, just a few weeks ago, ran a big story in their media section on how luxury magazines, the area I'm in, are fighting off the digital challenge, bigger and glossier. And Nicholas Coleridge, president of Condé Nast, in that feature, they primarily used Wallpaper Magazine and Vogue as their examples of the type of luxury product that is booking that trend. Nicholas Coleridge says very eloquently, it is very hard to replicate the physical allure of a luxury magazine on other platforms. It is something to do with the sheen of the paper, the way that the ink sits on the page, the smell of money, and the desire that wafts off the page. Well said Nick, he's a poet. So wallpaper, how do we fit into that? Wallpaper magazine is a luxury magazine, it deals in the luxury space. It's international, it's intelligent and influential. It's at the cutting edge of design and lifestyle, and importantly, it's a trusted brand. It's a resource, it's entertaining and it's informative, and we always say it's a keeper. Lots of people, most people, keep Wallpaper Magazine because it's an enduring source of information and entertainment. Our monthly circulation, global circulation is 100,000, 
just over 100,000. But our readership, because of this fact that it's a keeper, it's a trusted source, it gets shared with many people, we conservatively estimate is about 500,000. People do keep Wallpaper Magazine. Mr. Armani is a fan, and he's a keeper. This is his office we photographed this year, and there's his stack of wallpaper magazines, his back catalogue. Mr. Armani, Mr. Armani keeps it. And Mr. Armani's very happy. There's Mr. Armani with his wallpaper magazine, a trusted brand that he keeps. But of course, we do not ignore digital either. My passion and my certainty is that the two work together in perfect harmony. You do both well, you will survive. Our digital presence is impressive. 13.6 million page impressions per month, 1.5 million unique users. A website that is elegantly designed, it reflects the brand. It's another element of the brand, and it brings in more readers, more viewers, and more revenue. Social media, very impressive. 4.19 million followers in total. Probably not as big as Donald Trump, but we're getting there. 1.78 million Twitter followers, 670,000 on Instagram. So we're embracing digital. We always have, very early on, we embraced it. But we are determined that print will survive. Our digital revenue this year increased 8.8%. That's common with most publishing companies. It started from a lower base and it grows. But this figure is pretty extraordinary in the present climate and from the documentation and the negative predictions we were looking at earlier, wallpaper's print revenue increased almost 10% this year. So it is booking the trend. And why is that? Again, a trusted brand, quality content across all platforms. We push boundaries, we take risks, and we invest in print innovation. It costs money, but it seems to be reaping its rewards. Over the years, we've played with lenticular technology on our cover. This cover with Hussein Shalayan, bringing the print to life with lenticular printing. Light-sensitive ink, expensive, but fun and works. Glow-in-the-dark ink to represent artist Sereth Wynne Evans' glowing sculpture. Scratch and Reveal, our Design Awards issue, where we had a scratch, not actually a scratch and sniff, that would be interesting, but a scratch and reveal to reveal the winners of our awards. Die cutting, we invited Zaha Hadid, God bless her, to be part of this year, to be one of our guest editors a few years ago. She wanted to do something special. She wanted to do die cutting to make a die cut sculpture inside the magazine. Who are we to say no to Zaha? It cost a lot of money, but it made an eventful, a memorable, and a keepable piece of print publishing. She wanted to make a big hole in the magazine, and she did. Karl Lagerfeld, he followed the year later as a guest editor, and again we invited him to produce a piece of outstanding editorial and a cover. He, he knew what Zaha had done, and of course, Carl being Carl, he had to do something better. He had to do something more memorable than Zaha, and more expensive. He wanted to do a peel and reveal cover, something that had never been done before. A cover that you could peel off, sticky back, in a sense. Peel your cover off to reveal another image. At the time, he was obsessed, his model of the time that he was obsessed with was this young gentleman. Baptiste. So we wanted to raise Baptiste's profile to an iconic level, photographed fully clothed on the cover, but he wanted to reveal something more and to peel off the cover. It was the one time that even with our ambitions and our will to spend money in order to bring it back, that even this, we looked into it, was too expensive. It was too much. We would have been bankrupt. So I had the unenviable task of calling Karl Lagerfeld, who doesn't like to hear negatives, to tell him that, Karl, your lovely idea won't work. We can't do it. It's impossible. He thought for a while. He said how much, A, he loves wallpaper, but how much he believes print 
needs to be supported and pushed and developed. He loves books. He loves printing. He loves everything. But printing and, pr and books and magazines are a particular passion. So when I said, Carl, sorry, it's impossible, he thought for a while and said, well, how much is impossible? By that I could tell he was saying he would help. So in an, an effort to support great ideas in print and also to get his wish to reveal more about Baptiste, he very kindly assisted us in the print production costs. So Carl got his wish. A lot of people got their wish. This is Baptiste being revealed by Karl Lagerfeld. And up to date, we celebrated our 20th anniversary this year. And it was our biggest issue ever. 508 pages of great editorial content and beautiful, luscious, luxury advertising. Biggest issue in our history. That's the first cover, 1996, and the updated one, we made a riff on the original visual. A Gucci look from 1996 and a Gucci look from 2016. But we wanted again to do something that little bit extra at this special moment. So we invited Thomas Heatherwick, architect and designer of the moment. You know his work from the London Olympics, the Cauldron, the London bus he recently redesigned. Extraordinary architecture and design and engineering. A man full of ideas, innovative ideas, creativity, a, a magician, an eccentric, a great British eccentric, an inventor, a great designer. He had the idea of bringing the cover to life to make it a piece of architecture or a piece of sculpture, a movable piece of sculpture. So with a very clever but simple piece of engineering, very expensive again, but I think worth it. He sliced the magazine up, re-engineered it with a simple trellis piece of architecture and design, and turned the cover into a piece of kinetic sculpture. So there's our cover with this rather cryptic piece of graphics on, but under Thomas's guidance and design ingenu ingenuity, we ended up with this. It doesn't make that noise in, in real life, I can assure you. It's not my bones either. So a lovely piece of print ingenuity that reflects the brand, the quality and design innovation of the brand and of Thomas Heatherwick, a way of keeping print alive. It also made a rather fun musical instrument. We asked some of our friends to play with our 20th anniversary cover our friends in design and architecture, art and film and fashion, to have a little play with our is not dead. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I am, I am interested in, in, in the business side of it and, and seeing all of that investment that you're making. Fundamentally, it's a brand investment. Yes, So absolutely. people, when they're buying your rate card in terms of advertising, what they're really paying is a value added for the brand association. Exactly. So it's almost like celebrity endorsement, i.e. wallpaper is the celebrity. In a sense, I've not thought of it that way, BJ, but that's a, that is a very good analogy. Yes, I think, and over 20 years of investing in quality journalism, primarily, photography and writing, but also this thing you say, and what I've explained there, in investing in 
it as a product in its own right and it as a brand. It's 20 years of investment which is paying back. And this year, as I said, has been an extraordinary year where despite all the messages we hear about print not being at the right platform for ver various advertisers, it has actually increased by 10%. You know what, 10%. What's interesting? I think you're reinventing print. You're, it, it's creativity is the platform. It happens to be in the media of print. And you offer the conduit to that story. Thank I you. love it. I think it's ingenious. Tony, thank you thank so you very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, BJ. Tony, everybody. <laughs>